Hello and welcome to the JavaScript APIs in Pony 1 5.0 introductory videos. Here we'll take a look at some of the new JavaScript APIs available in Pony 1 5.0, as well as how to create applications using uh, dynamic widgets. This is a, these are widgets that are defined in code and are added to the form on runtime. So you don't have to rely only purely on the design time to add widgets to your uh, applications or modify the look and feel of your applications. Let's get started. We first create a new application and I'll call my app my demo app. And notice here the development language is JavaScript which is again a new feature in 5.0. Once I create my uh, demo app the first thing I want to do is look for uh, some, my service definition. So I go and open my service definitions. I have some RESTful services that I've previously created I'll just go add those RESTful services to this project. And you can quickly test those by doing a GET response. This fires it off. And uh, this particular service uh, queries Netflix for a list of movies that are sorted uh, by rating, which is greater than, uh, greater than 4.5. So if you take a look at the results, uh, you'll see that uh, you know you get a collection of movies and each uh, movie is in a record of its own. It has title, year, and we'll create an application that displays these um, in a meaningful manner on the mobile device in a native application that runs on iOS and on Android. Okay, so we, once our service definition is complete, um, we set the properties for the Kony server where this will run on. Okay. Once our server is set, we create a new form. And I'll, cr uh, I'll create a new mobile form, and I'll call this form movie list. Again, I'm not going to use the design time to add widgets to this form. I'm going to use uh, the code to do that. And because I want to do that in code, I'll have to go to my JavaScript and create a new JavaScript module. I'll call this services.js. Once I've created that, I have two empty, what are essentially empty files. So the first thing I'll do is create a function called add widgets to, to form movie list. Again, this is just something descriptive, so I'll know what it does. Okay, how do I go about adding widgets? It's pretty simple actually. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to create a, a widget uh, that's known as a segment box. And this is what I will place my segment into. My paste is, <laughs> pasted a bunch of spaces in here. So. Again, I could write all this in code, but I'm just uh, to save time and make sure I don't make any mistakes during this video. Uh, I'm just using code that I've uh, written before. So here we're creating a, a, a UI box, which is a Kony object. Uh, we're going to call it, uh, you know, something segment with a uniquely generated ID, and then set that as, a, as its ID and create a, a vertical layout and do horizontal alignment from our left, right to left. And continuing on, um, I'll go and create a segment, give it a specific ID, set its data map, and also go and add a number of uh, widgets inside the segment. So first I'll add an image, this actually won't go inside the segment. Then I'm going to create a new uh, label called uh, LBL title, label synopsis, label runtime, uh, label rating, label movie ID. Then I create a new VBox 
to, into which I go ahead and add all these different components. I create an H box into which I add that V box. I add my image poster and inside my segment I go ahead and add the H box that I defined there that contains all uh, the V box as well into my segment. And finally, I have my segment loaded. So again, all this is the same as dragging and dropping your uh, code on your uh, dragging, dropping your palettes from your uh, the the widgets from the palette onto the form. It's the exact same now, and this is all done in code. So here, this means that no longer are you restricted to using the Kony tooling to create your applications. Again, the power of JavaScript allows you to create these applications outside of any tool and just have it built using the Kony platform. Talks a little bit about the openness of the Kony platform and the fact that you're creating widgets in the standard manner. Again, this is very familiar to anybody who's created uh, you know, widgets or used other uh, widgeting toolkits. Okay, so now that I have my widgets laid out on the form, I need to create, uh, write some code to go ahead and call this function. So I'm going to create a function called call Netflix service. Inside of that, uh, I'm going to pass it the event object and inside of that, I'm going to create a new array and set a couple of uh, parameters, really just the service ID. Remember the Netflix service that we created in here, the service called Netflix. That's the same service I'm referring to here. I'll pass my input param, and then I'm going to have a new method called async movie list callback. So this gets called as soon as this uh, Netflix service is called successfully. So what does that look like? This movie list callback is what we will use uh, here. And the first thing we'll do here is look for a successful status code and then we'll look for a result table and inside of which we'll look for the movies collection. We first create a full title which is really the concatenation of the movie title plus parentheses and the year. The runtime that Netflix returns is in seconds so I divide that by 60 to get minutes and then I round, uh, create a fixed uh, uh, decimal number with zero decimal places so I get the actual minutes without uh, you know decimal minutes. I create my uh, data as I go and iterate through and push all the data into my segment and then I'm ready to go. You'll notice there's a red underline in here and this is because the code generate uh, the code completion doesn't know about form movie list and which segment it contains at the moment and because we just done this in code over here. Okay, so now we can go back to our form and set a couple of events. The first event we want to set is our init event. So when that form is uh, initiated, we want to invoke a service, invoke a function, and we'll call that function add widgets to form. And I click OK. Once I've added the widget, just before I, uh, just after I show the form, I want to invoke another function. And this time I'll call my call Netflix service um, function. So there are two events tied to this form. On the init, it adds all the widgets to the form. In the second post show, it makes a service call and the service call comes back in an asynchronous manner. So it makes that service call asynchronously calls this method. This method walks through and populates the form. So let's go ahead and build this and see what it looks like when you build and run this. So again, the build screens provides a number of channels. For the, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to pick the iPhone, Android, and Mango channels. So I click Finish, and this will go ahead and generate the build. We get our build successfully completed message, and then we can double-click our Android emulator to fire up our Android emulator and see what that looks like. Again, we've built this in debug mode, so the app is looking for a debugger to, to connect to. We cancel out of this and start our application.
So the application is running now and it's querying the database, uh, querying the backend system for the data and it's brought it all back. It's pasted this uh, into the various form, uh, various fields. It's placed this in there based on our um, callback method here. And you can see that it's actually going and fetching all the different uh, thumbnails. So here it's got the Avengers and it's got uh, Barbie, the princess and the pop star. And it's got all the different uh, movies out there that Netflix has that are highly rated. Again, you notice it we've converted the time over from seconds to minutes, so 65 minutes. The rating is just comes back as 4.5, so we append uh, a, a 5 to that. So if you look in here, so we go into the rating and we add a slash 5. So again, the JavaScript, standard JavaScript functions that we're allowing, allowing you to do. So the same thing now we're going to run in iPhone. Let's have a look at what it looks like on iOS. So moving over to my Android, uh, sorry, my Mac, I go and uh, run the standard extract command, extract my demo app, open up my Xcode project. ready to build my Xcode project that builds, deploys on my phone. Again, it's a very simple app. We don't set any uh, menu items or so on. So again, the init has added all the images. Now it's going fetching the data and it's going to populate it on the phone in a second. So there it is in uh, iPhone format. So you'll notice that the skins are all, again, iPhone-esque or Android-esque. We've made it in uh, the default skins in Kony Studio are all based on the underlying platform's default skins. So here you have the Android platform and the iPhone plat uh, platform. Now let's take a look at what the Windows Mango platform looks like. Here's our simula uh, Windows Mango simulator running. And there is the data and all the different images right there. So again, native feeling applications, native applications, not only, sorry, native feeling, but actual native applications on all three platforms using JavaScript as an input language and using the dynamic widgets API. Thanks for watching.